This is Lizzie from Let Zoe Spoil You and Sagira from Sagira Salutes You. And together we are Newbie versus Weeaboo. Sagira, Newbie. Lizzie, a Weeaboo. It's, it's Newbie, newbie versus, versus Weeaboo. Ahoy, hoy. Hi, de hi. Hello, how are you? I'm all right. It's been quite nice. I mean, I've not done much. I've played some Bloodborne. I've killed two bosses, so I'm feeling pretty proud of myself. Going, yeah, look at me. I know how to Bloodborne. Badass. <laughs> uh, I've done stuff. I went to work. I went outside the house. Ooh. <laughs> I ventured out. It was, it was nice seeing the children, but, you know, it's hard to social distance with certain age groups. <laughs> I know that feeling working in a special school. It was there was no such thing as social distancing at school. Yeah, they're just so excited to see each other. They're just like you could understand that when you've been locked up in house for ages and suddenly get to see someone your age and who you recognise. You're like, oh my god, I haven't seen you in ages. And it's like, no, 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 don't run to the hug from afar like this. Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, so it was nice seeing everyone just have to hold a two-metre stick at all times. Yeah, but we are looking at a new series now. Mm, And this is very different to Evangelion, my goodness. (laughs) (laughs) And yet Um, somehow similar. Yes, in some way similar. And it's called... (laughs) Here we go. (laughs) Go on, go on, you can do it. The series is called... Purella Mag- Maggi Madoka Magica. <laughs> yeah. You got it. Yeah. Puella, Puella Maggi Madoka Magica. So you say it so fluently. I'm like, uh, d- uh, d- d- I've had d- practice, you know. <laughs> but yes, this is a magical girl series, yes. which is a genre, you say. Yes, the genre of the magical girl, which is basically a bit of long standing anime genre of cute, kind of like pre teen girl meets magical creature that bestows on her the power of something i you know the moon some cards <laughs> like fruit like all kinds of things cute animals go yeah i can name you so many that i've watched over the years <laughs> and yeah then they fight whatever is the evil influences that is affecting the population of japan mm. and we are looking at series one And starting with episode one, which is called I First Met Her in a Dream or something. (laughs) (laughs) I love Japanese titles. Already it's got better titles than Evangelion. It was great. We'll get straight into it. My very first impression, very Alice in Wonderland. And you find that a lot with this kind of um, anime style, like the Lolita kind of dresses where it's like, fitted at the top and poofy at the bottom and the ribbons and the bows and all that kind of stuff. It's all very Alice-y, yeah. but Japanese style. So it's all part of that reappropriation of Alice in Wonderland, of which I wrote entire papers on, um, and you, which you can find my essays on it on my YouTube channel, plug. But yeah, um, it's very much because Alice was one of the first Western novels that got translated in Japan for Japanese girls to read. And it was part of the initiative to re-educate young Japanese girls to be more like Victorian girls. And so, you know, it's, it's bizarre because it was meant to, for girls to, to teach girls how to read and educate them on how to be prim and popper and good and how to dress. And then a lot of girls kind of went, but this also teaches me how to be escapist and magical and independent. So it slightly backfired. But then it also raised this whole idea that guys were like, oh, I really like these cute, well-behaved, subservient, good little Victorian girls. And therefore they created their own image of them looking like the escapist fantasy. But obviously, clearly all their personalities would be the good little girls that would serve them and be young. And then the moe genre came out of this as well. Oh, is that the genre? another genre that we're going to look at at some point? Yeah, I will get into moe during the course of this episode okay we see a girl and she's running and she's in like a black and white building and that's very alice and it's all checkered and striped and different uh, patterns and she's wearing what looks like a school uniform but like i say it's that kind of lolita style and she comes to a large room with a big green exit sign so you cannot miss the exit sign and she walks up the stairs she opens the door and we find that she is on 
this building that has wings <laughs> and she's above a dilapidated city with floating buildings and it's all got weird very quickly <laughs> yeah yeah it's all got magical and my favorite word whimsical <laughs> whimsy some of the things that they were showing there was some cgi spliced in there like the cog that was turning that looked yeah. a little bit cgi-ish but also it has like splatterings of steampunk in there as well so like the door that they use with the big metal like l- moving parts and then the cogs and all that kind of stuff it's yeah it's kind of a mixture of alice meets psychedelic meets meets cute meets uh steampunk and there's just all these different genres all thrown into one which all and kind of like cool. come together as like you kind of they're staples of the genre which is a thing that you'll find out a lot about during madoka about staples of the genre as we're watching this foreboding music starts to come in everything is black and white and grayscale except for this one girl who we're following i'm guessing but then another girl appears and she looks ready for battle. She's got her shield. She's got her uniform or whatever it is. And she's like, hooray, off I go, fly. <laughs> so she jumps off and flies towards this big building. And then she starts getting shot at and has a building thrown at her. <laughs> so she's pretty badass that she could avoid all this stuff and not get killed by the giant building being thrown at her <laughs> face. And then the girl in colour, she starts to talk to a cute but weird Digimon type character. <laughs> it's the only way I could describe it when I first saw it. <laughs> but it is adorable. The only thing that I don't like is its eyes. It's staring. <laughs> creepy eyes. <laughs> but they're talking about how brave this girl is. And it, it seems as if she knows this. The, the girl in colour seems as if she knows the girl in grey. But... We don't know anything yet. We, we've just come into this, so we have no clue what's going on. We don't know who's who or who knows what or whatever. The Digimon character tells the girl that she can change what's happening. And to do this, she must sign a contract to become a magical girl. Yeah. And as the audience member, you're going, what? <laughs> huh? <laughs> no, it makes total sense. You always have to do oh. something to become a Maho Shoujo. Yep, total sense. Yep, completely. <laughs> and she suddenly wakes up. And she's like, oh, it's a dream. The end. <laughs> <laughs> it was all a dream. No, not the end, but the credits. The beginning credits, the intro. And this is what I got from the intro. <laughs> cats. <laughs> I got cats, many cats. So very excited already. I'm like, oh, kitties. Hooray. Then Lolita style dresses. And clearly this girl who was in colour, she's clearly the main character because unlike evangelion where they have flashes of all the characters it's mostly focusing on her with the other characters popping up so this is clearly the one that we'll look uh, after the digimon character also makes a lot of appearances so they're clearly a big part in this and we are to expect comedy monsters nudity and cats yay <laughs> <laughs> all my favorite things <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be cute is what you're expecting that opening has told you it's about a cute very tropey series it's like oh have we got the slightly ditzy main female character with pigtails that is learning how to be a magical girl and she's going to trip over things and bump into things but she's so cute and endearing and it's clearly going to work hard and make lots of friends because everyone loves her innocent cute nature However, when you look at like things to be aware of for this series, it, up in the corner it said violence and nudity. It's like, oh, I would not <laughs> expect that, but okay. Yes, try and ignore that because otherwise it's going to ruin your fun of this show. <laughs> well, nudity, it didn't. It was... nudity is because of transformation sequences, another very important trope of the magical girl mm-hmm. genre. And then it goes into the uh, into the episode. Oh, and the music for the intro was, uh, after listening to Evangelion, it just was like, meh, <laughs> not as dancey. <laughs> it's so, cutesy, but it's not dancey. No, we're not going to be partying down to this one. <laughs> no, not this one. But we, it opens up looking at a house and the style of drawing, it's very bright, but soft. So unlike the sci-fi kind of bright, bold colours with the sharp lines and the, you know, I don't know just looking badass yeah this is more softer and oh this is all very lovely (laughs) feminine feminine that's a good word that's what it is it's it's rounded and pastels and everything about this is girly and feminine so this is the girl's house and we see that dad is gardening and we learn that her name is madoka yeah 
Monica. Because at first I thought it was Monica. Because I misheard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so for a while. oh my god! Oh no, that's that's flashbacks to the terrible dub of Card Captor Sakura when they turned Tomoyo's <laughs> name to Monica, and we're like, no, her name is Tomoyo. Why are you calling her Monica? Oh no, Madison, Madison. They called her Madison, and I'm like, no, no, that's not her name. But yeah, no, she's Madoka. Well, no, I. I misheard because he said it so quickly it sounded like Monica so I wrote down Monica and then the subtitles said Madoka and I was like oh so I had to cross it out and rewrite it we know that she has a little brother and they are trying to wake up their mum who seems very young she's a very young mother and that I find that a trope like when we watch things like um, Ponyo and things like the mothers always seem younger than they should be it's because most of them get married and have kids in their 20s like by the yeah by thirty you're seen as past it. Like there used to be a thing in Japan oh. that that um, if you worked in an office as a woman, if you got to thirty, they'd fire you because it made the other men uncomfortable to see old unattractive women in the office. And they they were far more productive if there was young attractive women in the office. So you, once you turn thirty, if you didn't keep your looks up or if you started getting to looking old, you'd get fired because yeah they didn't want the men's productivity to go down because it was bad for their mental health. Is this why a lot of like, Asian, Japanese girls do that extreme makeover thing where they pull all their face back and they use tons of makeup to look like they're so young and beautiful? Yeah, I mean, that, that's more of a Chinese thing than a Japanese thing. Ah, but okay. Yeah, but they, they do, like, cause they've got a very expensive and rich cosmetic industry and plastic surgery industry, although Korea is the one with the leading plastic surgery. Korea does plastic surgery, China does extreme makeovers, the Japanese live forever with healthy lifestyles um but there's also it's part of a culture that once you get married you don't work you just become a housewife so if you're not married by 30 it's a bit of a as well it's a bit it's a massive social taboo so the parents always look young because you know by the age of 30 you probably have got an eight-year-old on your hands kind of thing well Madoka and her mum are very close because they're brushing their teeth together and they're having a chat about boys and girlfriends so yeah they're, ch- they're chatting as if they are really good friends rather than a mother and a daughter and then we have the lovely water effect in the drain <laughs> I'm like, oh, yay, water. and then we see that her mother has she's got all of her cosmetics laid out like all of her makeup and stuff and each one is numbered so i'm guessing that's the order in which she uses them yeah which is bizarre because <laughs> I get it. Like you, you, you have to do things in a certain order, but surely after a certain amount of time using something, you kind of know what you're doing. It's that whole kind of visual representation of things happen in a sequence and you don't deviate from that plan. It's that whole idea of hegemonic Japanese society. Like you are part of the system. You are a cog in the system, which is why you get so many cog representations in escapist animes and anime and manga in general. So that is her like secret to success. And that is her sequence. If she deviated from that, she would not be a functioning part of society anymore. Well, mum's a bit of a narcissist. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, I'm so beautiful. And she's, yeah, in, she's very into her looks. And her mum wants her daughter to get some. So she shows her how to look cute and lovely with bows in her hair. And it's like, all right, mum, calm. <laughs> well, she's trying to raise it. strong, confident daughters rather than her before men. And what we learn from this is that mum is the worker and dad is the stay-at-home dad. And dad does a great job. The house looks lovely, the garden (laughs) looks full, and the kids look happy. So dad's doing a great job. Yeah. (laughs) Well done, dad. (laughs) Yes, which obviously in the Japanese world, it would never be like that. You wouldn't get stay-at-home dad. So they're they're changing one of the, the tropes already. We then get the trope that we have talked about Evangelion where Monica is running to school while eating her breakfast because that's what they do in these yep. things. Got to have a piece of toast and you've got to be a little bit late. Eat that toast on the go. <laughs> and she's running to meet her friends and they all talk about her mum and how inspiring she is. And of course, because this is a magical girl thing, it's all about independent, strong women. We learn that one of the girls is called Hitomi and she's the popular girl. She, all the boys like her. And she's the one with the greeny brown hair. <laughs> They've all got different colours, so you can go, that's that one and that's that one. <laughs> Very um, Sailor Moon of the different colours. Yeah. <laughs> also, something I noticed when I was writing all their names is a lot of their names have six letters. Madoka has six letters. Hitomi has six letters. Saika has six letters. Yeah, Homura. Homura has six letters. Yeah. The only one is Mami, who Mami. doesn't have six letters. Yeah, but, I think yeah. it's just... Um... 
Short names are cuter. So they have... Short names fine, but six letters. Like, it's very specific. <laughs> they all have six letters. <laughs> The blue hair girl teases Madoka, saying that she won't be popular with the boys because she's hers. And they start messing around and, like, hugging and ha, 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 ha. Yep. And Hitomi, Hitomi doesn't like this. She's not impressed. This is not how girls act. And she walks away. She's like, no, you do not act like this. <laughs> <laughs> See, it's, you've got all the, the cliches. So you've got the popular, good student, pretty, doesn't fool around. You've got the tomboy sporty one. And then you've got the cute, nice one. In school, the teacher is very intense and clearly has an issue with men and eggs. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Well, they say that she's in a new relationship and at three months is when things might change. And obviously the new boyfriend was not ple- pleased with sunny side down eggs. <laughs> but after she gets that off her chest, she mellows and she's nice again. And they introduce a new girl and she looks suspiciously like the girl in Medica's dream. Oh, how convenient. And her name is Hamura Akimi. Homura Akemi. Akemi. <laughs> Here we go again. <laughs> and everyone is absolutely infatuated with her. They're like, oh, a new girl is interesting. Yay. Yep. So next next trope of the genre is like the mysterious transfer student. <laughs> the aloof, powerful, want to get to know the mysterious transfer student. That is obviously going to be amazing at everything because that's how mysterious transfer students work. Well, after class, all the girls are asking her questions and finding out all about her. But the three friends are just speculating who she could be instead of asking her, where did she come from? Why is she here? Hamura asks Madoka if she would take her to the nurse's office as she's the nurse's aide. And do all Japanese schools have a nurse's aide? Or is this um, just basically, like in the classes, you have um, you have your roles and responsibilities. So, you know, you have the class rep, you have the people that are on cleanup duty, you have the people that is like, it's like being the first aid monitor. So it's like someone's poorly in the class. It's their job to get them to the nurse's office. Yeah, we don't really have that here. We have the you child, take that person. <laughs> Structure and responsibility. Structure and responsibility. I mean, it makes sense to have everyone have a role because then no one has to argue about who's doing what. So yeah, it's clever, but at the same time, responsibility. While walking to the office, the music is getting very surreal and it's kind of clinky clunky, which means something is amiss. And again, it's very Alice in Wonderland with its disorientating notes. When they get on their own, Hamura questions Madoka if she's happy and considers her family and friends precious. If so, she mustn't change her life or who she is. Yeah. Don't change. Be you. That's the end of it. Which this weirds Madoka out. And that's obviously going to freak you out yeah. when this new girl turns around and goes, be you. Don't be anyone else. Stop it. Whatever okay. you do, don't change or your family will perish, basically. It's like, basically. You'll lose what's precious. Okay. We then get some hero Celtic music. I was quite enjoying the hero Celtic music. And we go into a montage of how Humara is brilliant. She's great at academics and she's brilliant at sports. And oh my goodness, where did she come from? Who is she? Wow. Exactly what you were saying. Yep. (laughs) But from afar, we have Digimon Cat who is watching all what's happening, following the girls. (laughs) So now we know that they're not just a dream. They're actually there. So all this dream stuff is coming to reality. We go into the mall. Yay. <laughs> and the three friends talk about what Tamura said to Madoka and how she met her in a dream. They find this hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> you dreamt about her. Ha, 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 ha. You're so silly. Ha, ha, ha. And Hitomi tries to rationalise it by saying, maybe you met her before and then you've dreamt about her and it's come out all weird. Makes sense. Yeah, it's kind of a logical leap. Hitomi leaves for her tea ceremony lesson. I love that. As an adult, I would love a tea ceremony lesson. But as a kid, I probably would have hated it. Oh, I couldn't do it. I I could not sit the way you have to sit in the tea ceremony. It's that very very poised, very straight and on your knees. On your knees. Oh, gosh. Yeah, Yeah, of course it is. Oh, no. So she leaves for her lesson and the other two go to the music store because that's what teenage girls do. We next see Digicat running and is being shot at with some sort of laser type thing. <laughs> and it's like, what is this cat about if it's in danger this, cl- like this soon into the series? And running in like a dark tunnel. It's kind of like a car park because there's bikes everywhere. Yeah. So you assume it's a car park. And then whoever was shooting has run off. In the music shop, Madoka hears a voice in her head asking for help. So it's all psychic and 
new to her because she thinks it's in the headphones. She takes them off. She can still hear it. And she's like, who is this? It's help me, help me, please. So what do you do? You follow the voice, don't you? Of course you do. That's what you don't go, oh, I need to see a doctor. I'm <laughs> hearing voices. You go, no, I'm going to go and help this thing that's calling for me. It's destiny. It's magical girls, you know. We're not <laughs> going to make logical things of like, oh, no, I'm hearing voices. We've got to go, we've got to follow this whimsical thing because it will lead to whimsy and magic and enchantment. <laughs> uh, it'll be a totally different series if it's just her going to the doctor going, I'm going crazy, doc. Help me. <laughs> But she ends up in a corridor where there's the stairs and where there's the exit sign. So it's all part of the dream and it's all where she's supposed to be. She walks into a room and the digi cat falls from the ceiling or the vent and is very injured. And we find that it's Humura who is chasing and she calls it a thing. So she clearly doesn't like whatever this is and she's... She's not, she's not friends with it. I mean, it's very cute. So the fact that she doesn't like it, it's like, well, what kind of evil is this then? Because <laughs> Homura is clearly a hero from what we saw at the beginning. So why does she hate this digi cat so much? As Homura is about to attack, Sayaka hits her with a extinguisher, like foam, like, and they all escape. Yay. Yay. Suddenly, now it gets a bit weird. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. With anything that you thought was weird before, you're like, you know what, that was all fine in comparison to this. <laughs> I mean, did you really think I was going to go, here's a nice magical girl show? Oh. No, no, I knew there was going to be something about it, but this was just total left field. <laughs> yeah. This is like, right, okay, you've gone totally AWOL with this, but enjoy it. <laughs> but Humura is surrounded by butterflies and different images and is transported to this weird world of cut-out pictures. It's kind of like a Monty Python-esque kind of drawing style. Yeah. All, draw- all cut out and it's all that kind of weird movements and stuff as if it's paper being folded and stuff. It's, it's very strange. A big thing <laughs> in Japan is you've noticed how many times they flick through like folders of photos of themselves and stuff but there's a lot of scrapbooking like precious memories so there's a lot of crafting and paper craft a lot of paper craft in japan obviously it's the country of things like origami and the one with the strips of paper that i can't remember what it's called where you make cute little stars by folding strips of paper i used to be able to do it now i don't know how sorry tangent so yeah so it looks (laughs) like they've gone into a girl's picture book crafting scrapbook okay and we find out what this is later but as Madoka and Sayaka, now Sayaka, I keep wanting to call Sayataka, so that <laughs> might come out at times. But Sayaka, they run and they are also transported into this world. And it all, <laughs> it all gets a bit weird, <laughs> really, does it? But like the picture, they've got a big thing about the moustache, the big twirly moustache, because everything has one of those. <laughs> yeah. And then it's. Then there's these weird cotton bud things with the moustaches and then there's the butterflies and it's, so, it's very... <sighs> think of girl things, like young girl things. So butterflies is very, like, feminine and girly. But, Twirly moustaches? Yes, they're <laughs> from dandies. Your tea-drinking British dandies. <laughs> As a little girl, I don't remember. <laughs> yeah, but imagine your child... Dandies. Yeah, but think you'll think of your Alice in Wonderland thing and then think of like a lot of this stuff comes the iconography comes from British Victoriana and when you think of British gentlemen you think of top hats and monocles and moustaches okay fair enough well it's a big trope in this so we gotta get used to it <laughs> as they're looking at all this weirdness some chains drop in a circle around them and all the crazy disappears and then we have another girl and she's got blonde ringlets and she appears and she's very much the alice looking kind of girl. We then find out that this digi cat creature is called QB. QB, yeah. <laughs> QB? QB or QB. I've always Q-bay. ordered QB. I've written it in <laughs> phonetically. I put QB. I'm going to call it QB. But this is her friend. She's like, you found my friend. Thank you. And before she can introduce herself, she has to fight. So she goes through the magical girl transformation where the clothes all change and there's all pretty things. And she uses what looks like a Fabergé egg. (laughs) And again, it's that Victorian kind of knick-knacky thing. It produces some light and it produces some flowers. And she goes off to finish what she started. And she goes, kaboom, and fights these things and guns come out and it's like a shower of (laughs) bullets and yeah she's pretty badass this girl (laughs) 
it's very funny that with these kind of things where you have like the really beautiful, cute looking girls in the beautiful costumes and then they just brutal with the way that they fight <laughs> things. <laughs> it's like, bring on the guns. Whoa. Yeah, many a gun. And once that's over, they are back in the real world. Hamuda is waiting for them and the new girl says, oh, the witch has escaped, so tough. <laughs> you can chase it if you want, but whatever. Uh, the two face off for a moment and then Hamuda decides to walk away because she can't be bothered with this. This new girl heals Kube and we learn the girl's name is Mammy, which <laughs> I don't know. It's so about the name Mammy because obviously it's like mum. Yeah, Mammy. So it's like everyone's calling her mum. I don't know. <laughs> well, she's that other trope of she is the older, more experienced girl that's going to be the mentor figure. Yes, which she she is. Yeah. And Kube says that she wants that, or he says that he wants the two girls to sign a contract to become magical girls. Yay. Credit. Yes. <laughs> and that's the end of the episode. Yes. And that's it. It's just a literal introduction to who they are and what this was. Yes. I so. mean, it's stunning. I love the animation. I love the mise-en-scene in this. I love the, like, the use of colours and like oh, the classrooms being glass walls and the dream sequences being monochrome, the scrapbooking like art, and it's all butterflies and flowers and scissors and things that you kind of like associate with that. Um, it's, what it really reminds me of is all the works by um, Ikuhara Kunika, who is a uh, Kunihiko, Kunihiko Ikuhara, who is the person that gave us Sailor Moon and Utena. So you can see what influenced this, because obviously a lot of the, the tropes came from things like Sailor Moon. They even have a line in this to go on with the Moe stuff where they're like saying, oh my goodness, could you get any more like Moe? But Moe is, it's hard to describe it. Moe is a feeling you get towards a character that makes you want to kind of protect and love them. So Moe is safe and cute and nice and you want to look after them. So a trope came out in Japan where there was a lot of Moe characters created, but they were very vapid. They didn't have much personality. They were literally conglomerations of all the things that made you go, oh, I want to look after you. And so when you see Madoka, it's like, I am cute and innocent. And I've got pigtails and like, oh, I want to look after you because you're a bit derpy. So it's like it's playing with that Moe trope, but actually like they invest a lot more like personality and time to develop them as characters in this. So, yeah, it's interesting to see. It's interesting rewatching it and just going, God, and the music, the scoring is what I call. It's a kind of scoring that you get with like epic girl shoujo stuff when there's certain battles like when the girls get because it's the same kind of music you get in things like my otome and my hime and road um road and maiden <laughs> maiden rose <laughs> oh goodness well done me <laughs> obviously you're like you could have said that that would have made total sense to me it's true i'm nodding away going yeah, yeah totally yeah 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 road and rose, yep, yeah, rose and maiden <laughs> rose and maiden which is about <laughs> gothic Lolita magical girl dolls that fight evil using roses and things like that. So you can see all the influences and what you call Lolita outfits is kind of like there's a, a fashion sense called um, EGA and EGL, elegant gothic, elegant gothic aristocrat and ele elegant gothic Lolita, which came out of a reappropriation of Victoriana fashions into this like gothic Lolita style. And then Magical Girl Anime for a while took that on, and but then they moified it into kind of like cuter, fluffier designs based around those old like Gothic Lolita outfits. I do love it. I just don't think that those outfits would suit me at all because I haven't got that kind of build, you know? <laughs> oh, no. Even in my younger days when I was in the fully cosplays, I never did any of the Magical Girls or the Gothic Lolita. I did a lot of the elegant Gothic aristocrat because most of the time I wanted to be a boy. So I was very much like the aristocrat outfits I could do. But yeah, I was always a little bit too top heavy for the cute. And also my personality doesn't suit the cute little girls. See, I could do personality and stuff. I just think that I'm too curvy. I mean, I'm sure there's a whole community of women out there going, doesn't matter about your size, you've got to look cute, whatever. Oh, but yeah. For me personally, as me looking at me, feeling like me, if I put on one of those dresses, I'll probably be like, you are fatty, Lolita. 
<laughs> you would suit it very well. You could, because you can do the, the cue. And I've seen you do your steampunk Eevee and stuff. And you can suit it. I don't have the personality for it. I'm like the scary older sister or most of the time I'm the evil Bashanan in a, in a yaoi manga. So Wait, that's more of my personality. <laughs> You're the thing with lots of tentacles going blah, blah, blah. Oh, yes. Yeah, I'd be that too. Anything that has tentacles or claws <laughs> or looks like a dinosaur in some way, that's you. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, and it's the credits with the creepy girl singing. Could not listen to that for very long. <laughs> like the weird, creepy, high-pitched girl singing. But then we go on to episode two, which is called That Would Be Truly Wonderful, which is, I think is a line from it, isn't it? Yeah. So I'm guessing that because the first one, they had speech marks over it. So I'm guessing that each title is something that is said within the episode. I think it's either quotes within the episode or kind of feelings like, yeah, it's, it's Madoka's lines. Like she goes, I'm pretty sure I saw that girl in a dream. And then this one is like, oh, it'd be wonderful to be a magical girl. So it's like, yeah, expressions of what she's thinking or feeling. So unlike Evangelion, these have a little introduction bit and then goes into the credits. So just before the credits, uh, we open and we have Mammy who introduces herself and she explains that she made a contract with Kubei. And Madoka then wakes up again in bed and goes, oh, what another strange dream. Oh, all these strange dreams. And then there's Kubei sat there going, hi. (laughs) Oh, dear, not a dream. (laughs) Uh, and then we have the intro credits. Once again, we have Mum and Madoka talking at the sink while brushing their teeth. So this is clearly a routine that they have every morning just to catch up. And you can kind of see that this is their time together because Mum's obviously a busy businesswoman. And she, she, this is her time to kind of catch up, find out how her kids are doing and have that face time with them. Even if it's <laughs> brushing your teeth and yeah. <laughs> putting makeup on. <laughs> But Kubei is sitting there in the sink and mum is not reacting. So clearly Kubei is invisible to everyone else, but the magic girls and the soon-to-be magic girls. We then have a flashback to the night before where Mammy has invited the two girls over to her place. We find out that she lives alone, but she's still in school. So, hmm. That's, you, that's another trope you get a lot of. You get the character that lives alone but goes to school. Um, a lot of parents, if they're working, they go on business trips. So kids stay by, by themselves a lot more. Well, I mean, she's very self-efficient, so she's doing all right. They she kind of make have to be, yeah. And tea. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Tea and cakes, you know, was... another, another, yeah. another trope. You've got to have the cute girls eat cute cakes and drink tea and have cute tea parties. I mean, I wish I was that self-sufficient at that age, like, you know, a little bit more mature, but no, I didn't care at that age. <laughs> Mammy explains that Kubei chose them and he, she kind of makes out like they have no choice after he's chosen them. It's kind of like, hey, you've been chosen, so deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of how it comes across. <laughs> yeah, you're the chosen one. And- you can't outrun destiny. And then she starts to explain who the magical girls are and stuff. So we first of all find out that this Fabergé egg that she was fighting with is called a soul gem. And it is created when the contract is made and it is the source of their magic. So it is very important to have your Fabergé egg. (laughs) They then explain what the contract is and it is that Kubei will grant you one wish in exchange for the soul gem. Uh, The soul gem is then created. And if you have a soul gem, then you must fight witches. It is your duty. That is, that's the thing. You make a wish, you get your soul gem, you fight evil. Yeah. I mean, there's worse deals to be made. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, it seems like a logical thing. Like, for having your heart's desire or whatever you want in life totally fulfilled by a wish, but in return for this amazing gift, you have to fight the evils of the world, and, you know, become a superhero and help other people. I mean, you do get magic to go with it. So it's not yeah, like you're so... just punching the thing. You've actually got things yeah. to help you out. Yeah, You've you got can... other people to help you. So I mean, it's it's also that hard thing of when when they say, like, we'll grant you any wish. It's like, OK, I have two ways of dealing with a wish. I can be totally selfish and make it about me. Or I can do an unselfish wish and help other people. And it's really difficult yeah. to choose that. Because obviously you make one wish and then you become a magic girl. It's like, what is going to benefit you? Like, Mammy explains a couple of times that, you know, you could die doing this job. You could, you know, it might be the end of you. So getting your heart's desire is kind of a payoff. It's kind of death money, really. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Um, So then you have to think, like, well, 
do I make it a selfish wish and ask for like, I can't die or I'm impenetrable or, you know, I have super, super strength that will help me fight these witches or witches can't affect me, you know, those kind of wishes yeah. to help you out in the job. Or again, do you go with the, okay, while well, I'm off doing this, I want to make sure that my family and friends are okay. So I'll make a wish for them. So it's, uh, it's I can understand the struggle that they yeah. have. <laughs> Some difficult choices have to be made. Exactly. But after that, we go back to the morning routine and Madoka asks her mother what she would wish for. Obviously, she hasn't told her any of this stuff. She was just like, so, Mum, if you could wish for anything, what would it be? And of course, it's work related because that's her mindset. She's very about the job. And we now know that she wants to become the CEO of her company. So she is aiming high. She yep. wants to be in charge, which, you know, why work if you can't get to the top? <laughs> that's what most people I say most because some people are happy in the jobs that they have. But, you know, a lot of people, they strive, especially in the business world, they strive to get to the top of the building and make all the decisions. Delegate. <laughs> <laughs> Back to Mammy's flat and they ask about the witches. They explain that if a magical girl was born of wishes, then witches were born of curses. And all the bad things that happen in the world that cannot be explained, they are caused by witches. And this can be things like accidents that happen that you don't know how it happened or unsolved murders and suicides and all that kind of stuff that's yeah. all witches they apparently hide in the labyrinth which is the weird world that they were sucked into yep and most humans if they go in there they don't tend to come out of it so it's very <laughs> tricky to get them to save a human basically mammy warns the girls that being a magical girl is dangerous and they could die and then this makes them think because they were like oh this is all wonderful we get to save the world oh we could die oh everything's <laughs> different <laughs> So to help them out, Mammy says, like, well, I'll take you on a few witch hunts if you want to have a look at it, and then you can decide after that. Not that they have a choice, really, but <laughs> hey, why not? We're now walking to school, and Madoka arrives with Kube. Hitomi can't see him because, again, she's not part of the Magical Girl Club. So Kube joins Madoka and Sayaka's thoughts so they can all communicate silently so all they have to do is look at each other but of course to Hitomi this just means they're all just looking at each other weirdly just, <laughs> you know, intently staring as they're in a conversation but she thinks that this means that they are getting very close as a couple and she this freaks her out and she runs around going Girl, girls can't love girls girls can't love girls <laughs> It's like, well, the boy crazy girl doesn't think girls can love girls. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> but then doth the uh, does the uh, maiden protest too much? Mm, who knows? Maybe she's just a little bit jealous. In school, Kube explains that school is actually the safest place for him, even though Humura is there. And they all communicate still with their minds. But then suddenly Mammy comes into their heads. And she's <laughs> not even in the room. And it's like, where the hell are you? <laughs> but apparently they can, as long as they're close enough, they can all communicate through walls. And your mind is just completely exposed to each other. And you can't have a thought without the other person hearing it. So that's fun. <laughs> Keep your mind on your work. That's what I say. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we then get another flashback to Mammy's flat. And she tells the girls that Humura is also a magical girl and that Kube says she was after him to stop her from making more contracts. So she didn't want any more magical girls. Sayaka asks, isn't it better to have more to fight the witches? But Mami explains that the magical girls fight each other. And this is because after defeating a witch, they get a reward. And only the one girl can get a reward from each witch. So that's why they all fight each other to get this reward. Back at school, Humura stares at them intently. <laughs> not, you know, not suspicious at all. She's at the front, turning around, staring at them. Mammy comforts the girl, saying that she's there, and if anything starts, she'll help him out. So, again, being that motherly figure of looking after her two girls. We see Madoka drawing, and she's drawing what would be her outfit. She's like, this is what I would look like if I was a magical girl. And it's very sweet. And <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a little girl thing to do, drawing in your notebook and okay. imagining what life could be like. I love it that you know that is always important decisions and she's got a wish to make and all this and it's like no the outfit is the most important thing right now <laughs> what would I wear and I think that's what she gets from her mother what would I look like yes next they're up on the roof and it looks a little bit like heaven because it's a very white building and you've got the blue skies all around you can't see the ground so it looks like they're floating in the sky yes and it's all very lovely but Madoka and Say Sayaka eat their lunch the girls talk about their wishes and still don't know what they want. And they don't know if they want to die over this thing. Because they're saying this wish has to be so massive that you would die for it. 
So what could that wish be? Kibe says that most girls know exactly what they want and they tend to just take the contract. They're like, yep, I'll take the contract. Boom, done. Sorted. But Sayaka puts it down to that they haven't suffered enough to want anything that would risk their lives. So they haven't had a want so much that they instantly know, right, this is what I want to exchange my life for. They really have to think about it because, as I said, like it's not just impacting their lives. It could be impacting a family member's life. So... Yeah. (laughs) And also she starts to say, like, there's other people who suffer more than we do. Why aren't they getting this chance to make their lives better rather than us who actually are okay and well off? But as you said, you can't change destiny. If you've been chosen, you've been chosen. Humura arrives, but Mammy is watching from afar and she's ready to stop if anything goes down. Humura says she doesn't want to hurt Kubei anymore as he's already made contact with the two girls and it's too late. So no need to fight them anymore. And she asks if they are deciding what the wishes are. She reminds Madoka of her warning, saying like, you know, I told you to stay who you are and to think about your friends and family if they're precious to you. So don't forget that before you make your wish. And then they ask her what was her wish, but she doesn't want to answer and she walks away because she's the mysterious girl who yeah. doesn't answer questions. <laughs> she's our lone wolf trope. Yeah. She is the lone wolf magical girl that you're not sure if she's good or bad, but you kind of like, well, you work it out. But like, you're like, ooh, mysterious, good or bad, friend or foe. We'll turn up at some point and make more sense later. After school, Sayaka and Madoka. Am I saying that right? Madoka. 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 See, I, the faster I say it, the easier it is. Because I stop to think, I go slower and go Madoka. Madoka. Maduka. Medusa. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to transform. After school, Sayaka and Madoka blow off Hitomi, who is devastated. They're like, look, we have plans tonight, so we can't really hang out. And she's, like I say, she's devastated. She runs off and she's crying. She's like, three's a crowd. <laughs> Over dramatic, but then she thinks that her two friends are ditching her and she's losing them, even though she's the popular girl. She yeah. could have any friends she wants, but these are obviously two of her closest friends, so they're the important ones. But Humura is following them and she's spying and she's keeping her distance so they don't know. Mammy has taken the girls out for dinner to start the experience. Sayaka brought a bat. <laughs> <laughs> Because all magic girls have a bat. And Madoka bought her drawings. And the other girls find this hilarious. You drew a picture. Oh, you're so cute. <laughs> she's like, okay. <laughs> yeah, she's the cute ditzy one. Everything she does is adorable and lighthearted. Fills you with my but, way. But that's fine if she's in on the joke. Ben was laughing at her and she's like, oh, you're laughing at me. Oh, no. <laughs> and the eyes go all wiggly. Mammy takes them down to the back corridors where the witch was before. And the soul gem is starting to flash, indicating that there's witch residue, which sounds delightful. <laughs> witch residue. They have to follow the gem and they have to do it by foot, which apparently is important. It all has to be done by foot. You can't float. There's no magic in this part. You're just walking with the gem. They end up outside and the gem is getting weaker and weaker because they're starting to lose the witch. Madoka questions if Hamura is evil. Because you would, wouldn't you? Because as far as she knows, she was trying to kill this cute little animal. And it's like, well, why are you trying to kill this cute animal? And why won't you be friends with Mammy? What's happening? <laughs> so, of course, all the questions around this mysterious girl. We then cut to an old building where a woman, she's kind of limping and she's not really with it. And she's kind of staggers into this building. And obviously, it means something if they're showing it. So, <laughs> yeah. so first you're like, oh, something's going to happen. And it cuts away. And you're like, nothing happened. But obviously something's going to happen because that's the anime way. We go back to the tracking and Mammy explains that witches can be found in places such as car crashes and fights, suicide spots and hospitals. And she says hospitals are horrible because you can see the witch draining the life from these poor sick people, (laughs) which, yeah, that would be traumatizing to watch if you can see it. And then the gem starts glowing. Ha ha, witch nearby. (laughs) And they run to where the staggering woman is. Who is now up on the roof? So this is an example of someone committing suicide. The witch is in charge of it. And the very Japanese way of committing suicide where you take your shoes off. Why? They take their shoes off. I don't, I've never really <laughs> like, it's one of those things like, it's like when you take your shoes off to go into somebody's house, there's a whole respect. So you take your shoes off to commit suicide. Bit of tradition. As she jumps off, Mammy transforms into her magic girl clothes and she catches her with her magic and slowly lowers her to the ground. So they got there in time. Hooray, magical girls. She then checks the woman and she has a witch's mark, which is on her neck, which they call the witch's kiss. 
and it's a butterfly. So I can see why you are very drawn to this uh, series as butterflies seem to be very prominent in yep. it. <laughs> I like a butterfly. I like a lot of butterflies in Japanese mythology. The butterflies were the messengers of the Shinigami. And in some like beliefs, they are they go between the spirits of the dead passing messages. Well, they go into the building to find the witch and a portal appears, which is also a butterfly. Mammy turns Say Sayaka... <laughs> I've lost it. I've lost it. Right. Mammy turns Sayaka's bat into a magic bat and it gets all big and magic looking and it's... <laughs> ooh. And then they enter the portal and we're back inside this weird labyrinth world with the cotton wool mustachio things. <laughs> and they're not bothering anyone. They're just getting on with stuff. So they just left them. We also now have flying mustachio jellyfish, which are attacking. <laughs> yep. And Mammy has an amazing steampunk gun. Like she pulls out this rifle with all the pretty patterns and stuff and starts shooting at them. And it's so cool. They enter some doors. Kachunk, kachunk. So many doors. And they find a blobby monster with a rose bush for a head. And this is our witch. Yep. <laughs> so very different. But again, it's in that kind of cut out paper styly. And because of that, it moves weird. And yeah, it's not pleasant. <laughs> <laughs> Mammy uses the bat to make a force field to protect the two girls from what's happening. And to make sure they don't come in. Because <laughs> they are not magical girls yet. And although she ends up upside down, because while she's fighting, the thing gets like out a tentacle thing and then grabs her and holds her upside down and she's full of confidence she's like oh maybe i should finish this now yeah. <laughs> so, but I I mean, yeah i love the little like the little touches in the fight like she goes to curtsy and you think why is she curtsying to the witch like how do you do witch but then the the guns drop out of the skirt and then when she picks her hat off and then the guns all come out of her hat and i'm like there are guns there's like lots of pocket dimensions in your clothes <laughs> be handy wouldn't it mm. take off your hat chocolate everywhere yay although i probably do that anyway just stick some chocolate in my <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just keep it in there oh yummy where did that come from <laughs> magic <laughs> but she escapes and she's like let's do this and she gets her ribbon from her hair and she turns it into a giant gun and i mean a giant gun <laughs> this is like the biggest gun we've seen so far and she kills the witch and it's that simple there you go yeah. You just get your magic stuff and you kill a witch. Ta-da! See, girls, why wouldn't you want to be a magical girl? Yeah. Because this isn't the worst of it, I'm guessing. I'm guessing there's more to it than this. <laughs> this is just one of those starter episodes where everything goes smoothly. <laughs> but they transport back to the real world and they find a grief seed, which is a witch's egg. And again, it's kind of like, not a Fabergé egg this time, but it's like a needle with a big round bit in the middle. It's hard to explain. Watch the episode, then you'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> but Mammy uses the seeds to brighten her soul gem and restore her power. And this is what they're talking about when they talk about rewards. Regenerates them, basically. Yeah. And it took a load of black out of her soul gem. So I'm yeah. guessing it's taking out any evil or any bad thoughts or anything. Yeah, like as her... As cleansing you, it? Yeah, cleansing it of any tainting from having to touch a witch. Mammy then throws the seed and Humaru catches it. And she says it's good for one more go. So obviously there's more than, well, there's quite a lot of power in there to help. So you can share it. And she throws back the gem and it's like, oh, she's not a sharer. No, no. Which <laughs> she, is, she wants her reward. Which goes back to like why she doesn't want more magical girls, because it's more competition for the seeds and getting more power. So they then go outside and they check on the woman who's traumatised, but they comfort her and try and calm her down because as far as she knows she hasn't got a clue what happened she was at work and suddenly she's on a roof and now she's on the ground so she she can't remember anything so of course you'd freak out if you the whole part of your life has been <laughs> like wiped from your memory but Madoka wants to be a magical girl and she's at home and she's doing her pitch and she's drawing but she still doesn't know what to wish for the end. She's a she's a good soul and she wants the power because she also wants to help people and ease other people's suffering. So she is a good girl full of innocence and possibly naivety, but she doesn't know what her big grand wish would be. No, it is difficult. Yeah. But yeah, I like it. I think it's a good series. It's a nice change from Evangelion. Like not so much monsters and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, but more 
fantasy and whimsy. I mean, there's still disgusting things in it because <laughs> that <laughs> yeah. was really pleasant. Yeah, and I'm sure they're going to get more grotesque as it goes along, <laughs> as the as the artists go. How can we make this look even worse? But at the moment, yeah, it's it's a nice change. Um, it's nice to mix it up between sci-fi and fantasy. Yeah. And yeah, I, every single dress that they wear, I'm like, I like that dress. I like that dress. I'll wear that dress. Oh, that dress is pretty. <laughs> <laughs> the girly side of me that's like, oh, dresses, pretty dresses, Alice type dresses. And then, of course, cats. So I'll be yeah. looking forward to seeing more cats. And the fact that Cube looks a lot like a cat makes me happy. So <laughs> <laughs> you're like, yep, I'll have one of those. Where is my Cube soft toy? I'm expecting one of those to turn up in your house. Well, that's it. I, rem- I when I saw him, I thought I've. I'm sure I've seen this as a plushie. I'm sure I yeah. have. So now I know what he's from. So now yes. I can be like, "Yep, one cube, please." <laughs> but do not buy it until you finish watching the series, just in case the the advertisement has like a picture that spoils something in it. I will do. Okay, but something else might come up that I want to buy. So <laughs> yeah, we shall see. But yes, I'm very happy to be watching. It's only 13 episodes, you said. 12 I think or so, yeah. 12 or 13, I yeah. remember. So it's not going to be a very long series. No, but then there's two movies, I believe, that go with it. So yes, uh, very good. I give it a thumbs up and I cannot wait for the next episode. Yay. So hooray! Lizzie, I have a different question to ask you today. Ooh, okay. What would you wish for to be a magical girl? <laughs> I'm going to give you one selfish option. And one non-selfish option. I have always, I always know what my number one wish would be. And it's 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 a bit random, but it's, it's the same wish that it's been forever. Um, and I've always wished that my mother would be the sole winner of the Euro Millions. Why your mother, not you? Because she's supported me and given me a lot of money over the years and helped me out with things. And I want her to go into later, because I don't make a lot of money. So I can't give her a good home and later life and all that kind of stuff. So I want to make sure that she has everything and her husband have everything they could possibly have to have a good life. And I also know my, my mother would share it with me and my sister. So I know that by making sure that she has everything, she'll make sure that I have everything. So that's your non-selfish wish. What is your selfish wish? I don't know. Like I want to, it's all these things that like, well, money would probably solve that. If like, because obviously I want to be a healthy weight, but never gain weight no matter what I eat. Oh, okay. <laughs> like, but that was okay. like, so I always have my ideal of my body in my head. I, my other wish is that I also want to be completely fluent in a couple of languages. I don't know how that would help me in life, but I just would like to be fluent in Japanese, Korean, Mandarin, Bahasa Malayu. See, you have wishes that are obtainable, you know, with hard work and stuff. You could actually get those wishes. Yeah. My wish is a little bit more out there. Oh, God. <laughs> that is literally a magical girl wish. So my non-selfish wish would be that my friends and family are healthy and happy and blah, 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 all that stuff. And my selfish wish would be that I could turn into a cat girl whenever I wanted. That is (laughs) a little bit more whimsical than my, (laughs) I want to be able to look after my body. I'm not talking about like some weird mutant cat thing that looks like ridiculous. I want to look look cute. I don't want to have like some weird bug eyes or like some turned up nose. I want to look like a cute cat girl who's got cat abilities and I can turn back into me whenever I want. So that's what I do. Okay, if if we're talking about a completely unattainable wish... My 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 one wish has always been the power to enter any TV show and video game and become the character I've designed for that video game or TV show because everything I watch I have that if I was in this show this is what I'd look like and this is my powers and this is who I get off with like so I'd want the power to enter all of my TV shows as the OC character that I have created for that show or game. That's cool. Yeah. So there you go. Uh, if, if I was going to do a realistic wish. <laughs> boring Um, my realistic um, wishes aren't boring maintaining the perfect weight whatever we eat come on that's a good wish it's a good wish but at the same time again if you i just went to the gym and didn't (laughs) if we just worked harder we could get there same like learning languages if i just studied more i could have got better at languages but it's hard so my wishes are just skipping corners something i would like because i'm not good at it is maths 
I just just like to be good at maths because I'm not. It's the worst thing. I hate it so much. I fear maths. Oh, I God. disdain it totally. But if I was good at it, then I wouldn't fear it. So, yeah. yeah. And again, if I worked hard and just studied properly, then I'd probably get there. But why would you when you can wish to have all the mathematical knowledge you needed? <laughs> so you mean a calculator? No, not a calculator. <laughs> I wish no. for a really good calculator. No, not a calculator. You can't work out trigonometry. Algebra Actually, you can stuff. on a science calculator because it's I got the it co- it's got the cosine little button, so you can press. Them. I want to. Do, I want to do it where you can look at a maths equation and you can just finish it. You just yeah. done it. You don't have to work it out. You don't have to go uh, x equals y equals no. with squiggly sign. None of that. <laughs> you just look at it and go, yep, that's the answer. That's what I want. But yeah, so there's three wishes there. Which one do you pick? I don't know. <laughs> that's why I'm not a magical girl. <laughs> no, exactly. <laughs> social media. My social media are coming on mustachioed Victorian gentlemen who are going, handlebar massages, media. You do know it's just going to be you with a handlebar moustache. <laughs> I think I've actually got legitimate photos of me with a fake moustache somewhere around the place. Mine is going to be... Cube is going to come in and magic it into my social media. So here comes Cube. Hi, Cube. Ping. Oh, look, there's my social media. Thanks, Cube. <laughs> Thumbs up. <laughs> Not, like I don't make enough work for myself. Well, there we go. <laughs> now, now I have to draw a fake Cube. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, that's Cube, but not Cube. <laughs> I should have said weird Digimon cat. <laughs> yeah, then you could have just had a weird Digimon <laughs> cat. Fine. Although saying Even. that, since the anime is the original anime is like a hundred episodes, and there's the remake and a couple of video games and the original, the, that, you would probably end up drawing something and being like, "Oh, that looks like blah blah mon," and you'd be like, "Right, yep. <laughs> <That wouldn't laughs> I copyrighted it by accident." <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> Say goodbye, Lizzie. So, from a weeaboo, this is Janne. And from a newbie, it's magic girls. Yay!